Okay, well, uh, welcome from me as well. I'm, I'm Jonathan Field. Uh, I'm one, one of the founders of PTFS Europe. Um, many of you I know, uh, but there's lots of new faces as well, which is great. So uh, thank you so much for coming today. Um, my task is really to talk about what we've been up to over the past year. And um, it's been an incredibly big year with a few sort of um, momentous things going on. So uh, I'll try and rattle through it quite quite quickly because there's a lot of it. Um, but I guess from certainly from our point of view and uh, for some of you as well, I guess, one of the big events uh, for this year is that Nick Dimmon and Ian Bayes retired, uh, who uh, Nick and I started the company in 2007 uh, and Ian joined the space shortly after that. Now, many of you will know uh, Nick and Ian, for those of you who were sort of previously Cersei um, customers in the days of uh, Cersei, that you will know them from, from then as well. So uh, I started working with Nick and Ian in 1993. So it must have been about eight or something then. I can't. <laughs> anyway, it was a long time ago. Um, uh, and it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure to work with them over the years. They've, um, I don't think we've had a crossword in, in 30 years and uh, they're great people. So we're, we're delighted for them that they're now able to retire. It's something that Andrew and I have been planning for for probably two years. Um, so it's been a long time in the making. Uh, you might think it's easy actually to find people to sort of just come in and, and replace people like that. But actually it's not. It's, it's actually very, very difficult. Um, but Andrew and I are delighted with, with the outcome that we've had. So um, many of you know Bywater Solutions because of the huge amount of work they do in the COA community. Um, and Andrew and I have had a, a long relationship with uh, uh, Brendan Gallagher and Nathan Karula, uh, who are the two founders of that company in the US. And uh, we're delighted that, that, that they have uh, purchased Nick and Ian's shareholding and they're now working with us. Um, so it's great because uh, they're known to us. They've got the same ethics as us. They want to carry on uh, the sort of work that we've sort of been doing. So it's, it's, uh, we feel it's sort of win, win, win. Um, and it's, we're very excited about it. In terms of what that means for, well, maybe for us, but also particularly for you, uh, we think there's actually quite a lot of um, sort of added benefits that this sort of relationship will bring. Um, we've already, as I say, had a very strong and long relationship with Bywater Solutions, and we just feel that that will strengthen uh, as we go forward. We remain two separate private companies, but uh, we'll be doing a lot more together, almost certainly. Uh, potentially in terms of scale, there's benefits in terms of projects that we can work on together. Uh, you probably aren't, it's probably not transparently obvious to you, uh, but we do a lot of development work with Bywater and have done for the, quite a number of years. So uh, we're planning on doing even more. So there's a big benefit, uh, hopefully, in terms of the amount of code that we'll be adding to Koha in particular, uh, and also Aspen Discovery. We're planning to add uh, considerably more features and functions. So that's great from that point of view. Um, they, like us, produce a huge amount of community documentation and uh, videos and do online seminars. And we're hoping that we'll be able to extend that. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's in the public domain anyway, but hopefully extend it and share it uh, over the coming months. Uh, in terms of, for us, it obviously gives us long-term -term stability. That's really what we're looking for, so that Andrew and I can carry on uh, doing what we're doing, while well, all of us here at Peter for Europe can carry on doing what we're doing. Um, and we think and we hope that independent companies are thriving and surviving. That's, that's what we want to happen. Obviously, in our day-to-day -day jobs, we have to compete against huge corporations, <laughs> um, which is not always easy for small companies. But um, yeah, we feel that it's great to keep independent companies thriving. So, uh, so there's lots of good things coming out of that, I think. So we're very excited. Um, in terms of internally, uh, PTFS UK, you know, uh, PTFS Europe in the UK, uh, in terms of staff news, those of you who were in Leeds last year will have met uh, Jacob, Pedro and Matt, who are, are three new developers. They started on, on the customer day actually last year. Um, and since then, we've added Alexander Berry Blanchard as a software developer as well. So there's a, a pattern emerging here that we're scaling up our development uh, team. Uh, and that's partly uh, due to this relationship, growing relationship with Bywater Solutions. We've actually got a lot of development on the on the books at the minute. Um, Val, you would have met Val Skelton, who's been who's done a brilliant job organising today. So most of you would have met her as as, uh, as you came in 
uh, about joining us as our administrator. Uh, Rachel Stewart's working with Bernard on data migration. So some of you uh, have been doing projects in the last year, may have come across Rachel during those projects. Uh, Sam Goldsmith, who's uh, a former co user actually, who joined us um, beginning of the year as well, so in sales. Uh, and then Rasa. <laughs> Rasa. <laughs> Shatienski. Uh, joined us in customer support, and she's she's been great. Some of you will have contact from Rasa on the on the help desk um, uh, uh, over the past uh, sort of month or two. And then finally, uh, Helen Symington, who actually joined us uh, last week or the week before last, very, very recently. So she's also working with Fiona in sales. So, um, so yeah, you can see we've actually we've done quite a lot of recruiting in the last 12 months, So, which has been great. It's great to have new faces. Um, but as Fiona said, we're getting quite big now. Uh, yeah, in terms of our sort of, well, we're spread right across the country, as you know, we're virtual. And when I was looking at this map, I, I was thinking how beautifully symmetrical it's looking. So this is all part of our recruitment strategy. So if you know anybody who's in Norwich, that's who we're, that's who we're, looking, that's who we're looking for next. Um, but uh, also, those of you who did meet Pedro last year, our developer Pedro. Pedro is um, out there in the Azores. He's got a boat or something, hasn't he? Or is there an island? Oh, there must be an island out there, yeah. Uh, so he's a little bit further away. And then, of course, we've got Brendan and Nate now who are in um, uh, both east and west side of the United States. Uh, so, yes, uh, we're spreading our wings a bit virtually. Jonathan, you don't know what happened to you. Have I? Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was Andrew actually put that pin. <laughs> Uh, we're delighted to, to welcome a lot of new customers over the past year. Um, it's been great, great people to work with. Uh, National Museum Scotland, uh, Colchester Institute, uh, Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, interestingly, were a co customer before uh, the pandemic. And unfortunately, they actually shut down the library during the pandemic. And due to popular demand, it was they were brought back to life. So we're delighted about that and uh, delighted to have them back working with us. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you back. <laughs> yeah, that was fortuitous. <laughs> um, and Regents University uh, London, who were actually at the Cusper Day last year and just went live in the past uh, 12 months, so they're talking a bit little later. Uh, German Historical Institute of London, so welcome to you here today as well. It's great to have you here. Uh, Armenian Institute, who went live uh, this week, last week, very, very recently. Um, we're just starting a project literally right now with the Delana University there in Delana in Sweden, which is northern sort of Sweden. Um, so we're very excited to be working on that project with them. We're working with Cranfield University with DSpace, that's a project in progress. Uh, Nescart, which is the Northeast Surrey College of Technology, that project again starting in a few weeks' time. So we're very excited about that. Um, with Aspen Discovery, uh, our discovery tool, Middlesbrough Libraries, they uh, managed to get one of the Library On grants, which you may have seen advertised uh, in the library press. Uh, so that's great. They've had some funding to do that project. Um, and in terms of NHS England, the list is too numerous to even put on the slide. Uh, <laughs> so welcome to all the <laughs> NHS people here. Uh, but uh, in particular, Northwest NHS Libraries, um, big consortia, Yorkshire and Humber as well. Uh, and then to our existing consortia in uh, Midlands and in London, we've had uh, many new joiners to that. So, so thank you to those people. Um, yeah, throughout this year, we've been out and about. Um, some of you may have seen our online presentations at the COACON in Helsinki uh, back in August. So I think it was five, five of us went out to Helsinki. Um, we actually, we got a huge amount out of that event, personally, I think, individually, but we also contributed a fair amount to that event as well. So um, both Matt, uh, Aud, uh, myself, and some of us as a group did a lot of um, presenting there. Uh, so that's us in our little apartment in Helsinki having dinner. And um, also throughout the year, I attended the Swedish user group in Vastaras. It just uh, 
um, east of Stockholm, uh, which was a really interesting event as well, actually. Very good, very well attended, lots of uh, Kaha activity in, in Sweden. So that was very interesting. Uh, and whilst I was there, uh, Andrew was out in Marseille um, at the Hackfest, which is the annual sort of uh, Koha meetup uh, for developers and other interested parties, uh, with about 40, I think it was about 40 other people there, weren't there, something in that number. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was in Sweden, it was about two degrees, almost zero. Andrew was in Marseille, it was about 24 or something, wasn't it? <laughs> I can't remember, it must have been a toss of a coin or something. Yeah. How that ended up like that. Uh, but that's been good. Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, Martin is going to talk uh, about um, our things we've been, uh, well, our sort of future development sort of thoughts in a, in a moment. But just to talk about what we've been up to, as I mentioned, we have sort of grown our development team quite considerably. And that's, that's really reflected in the sort of work, the output that we've been doing. Um, Yes, yeah, a huge amount. Those of you who are interested in electronic resource management, you'll know last November we, um, we introduced the electronic resource module to Koha. Um, and we're very excited because just last night the code was pushed for the usage statistics module, which will be coming this November. That's a very exciting piece of work. It allows you to gather uh, e-journal usage statistics from your publishers and, and report upon them. That's, we're really excited about that piece of work. Um, as well as a few other uh, sort of vendor enhancements to, to uh, accommodate ERM as well. Uh, we've done a lot of work in terms of interlibrary loans. We've built a connection to Reprint's desk, for those of you who are familiar with that service. Um, the ability to do batch requesting, more uh, copyright clearance integration. So uh, some interesting things around there. I probably missed a few things in the interlibrary loans area because it seems like we're always doing stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's a huge amount of work. And there's actually a huge amount of work to come on interlibraries loans as well, which again, I won't spoil Martin's thunder, but uh, we're excited about that. Um, Martin in particular has worked, um, done a mammoth amount of work getting a bookings module into Koha. And again, that's just past QA, so we'll be in this November's release in a few weeks time. Um, so some of you will be familiar with that because some of you, thank you so much, have been helping us test that, uh, particularly the health libraries and, and some other folks. Um, so that really relayed to book material ahead of time, uh, you know, on a calendar basis. So it, that can be both um, uh, sort of print materials, but it also can be other things like, um, you know, instruments or whatever other paraphernalia. Uh, so we're really excited about that piece of work. It's a huge piece of work. And there's a few other smaller things, patron activity, more granular patron activity tracking, uh, better, more configurable email handling, um, uh, cookie consent, more improved con cookie consent to comply with GDPR. Uh, Martin, again, has been doing some work on trusted self issues. That's when you allow people to issue things to themselves without any staff there. Uh, and so it goes on, more patron consent. Uh, people who use CSS and JavaScript, uh, you could do that per branch, library branch now, which I think is quite a nice enhancement as well. CC gamma and notices. Uh, yeah, that last patron activity is extended further back. Um, perhaps of limited interest, but uh, some of our French libraries have been working on a preservations module that's sort of related to binding and uh, it's like a bit like a binding and off-site collections um, module where you can track things off-site. So that's quite interesting. Um, Martin's been working again with the Tavistock and Portman Institute on uh, ability to issue uh, report uh, inappropriate content in the catalogue. So that's been an interesting piece of work. And then just generally, the whole team's done a huge amount on modernization, performance, um, translation, security, just really the day-to-day -day stuff we have to do as part of maintaining software. Um, but a lot of work on accessibility this year as well. So um, we've been working with the Shaw Trust this last year who specialize in accessibility testing. Um, and again, we've fixed a number of things that will be in 22.11, uh, there's always things to fix with accessibility, so we're trying to keep on, on top of things. Um, but that's been a, a good project. And Matt Blenken's uh, Sop Uzar, one of our developers, is now the worldwide Koha accessibility advocate. So he's the sort of specialist, if you like, in that particular area. 
Um, we've been doing a lot of work with Aspen Discovery, who some, some of you will be familiar with Aspen. Um, it's uh, like another open source product we've been working with the last uh, sort of few years. And we've contributed uh, or started contributing code to that project as well. So that's something that's really been new over the last 12 months. So things like, again, cookie consent, so these sort of GDPR things that are uh, of you know, particular interest to, to Europe, of course. Um, uh, RIS export, uh, and then some work on user list as well. So it's just a huge amount of stuff, basically. So thank you to all our development team who, who put in hours of work to make this happen. Um, in terms of our infrastructure, this I, in particular I wanted to talk about because we've actually had a, a, done a huge amount of work in infrastructure this year, and it has impacted on you uh, in particular. This is one area that has impacted in you. So we've done um, somewhere in the region of 80 or more upgrades uh, in the past year. And part of that, we've been moving almost all our sites uh, from the sort of original installations of Koha that we were doing uh, that were difficult to maintain to these sort of package installations. So to give you sort of indication of what that means, a package installation is, is sort of like what happens on your desktop when Microsoft Word says, can I update itself? Or one of these applications says, can I update it? And you press a button, it updates itself. So there's a reason we've been doing that, which I'll talk about. Uh, we've been trying to move all our customers onto one version. And again, that's for uh, that's that's to make things more stable for you. It also means that we know that we're only dealing with one uh, code base, really. So that's important. Uh, we've also done 42 server migrations this year. So some of you would have seen my email. I can't remember when I sent it, right at the beginning of the year, about our hosting provider has, was ending of life, their legacy platform. Uh, so to give you an indication, in a normal year, we would probably do one or two server migrations. So this year we've done 42. So you can imagine <laughs> the kind of work involved in doing that. Um, the huge benefit that's come out of it is improved performance on the new platform, uh, which we've been measuring. We're getting great performance out of the new hardware. Um, and as part of that, we've been increasing the automation that the technical team do. So what that really means is the ability to automate tasks that we normally do by hand. So for example, when we onboard a new customer uh, and we have to build them a Koha server, uh, typically in the past, that would, take, um, that would take about three hours or so to do that kind of work. With our automation, we've got that down to about 20 minutes now. And with somebody not even you know, being able to set it off, go and get a cup of coffee and come back and check and it's finished. Uh, so this is hugely important. Um, it also means for in the event of disaster, we can recover a lot quicker. Um, and in particular, in terms of what it's going to mean for upgrading uh, in the coming months is that on, and next year in particular, is that it's going to shorten the upgrade procedure considerably because essentially what we will be doing is pressing, almost pressing a single, it's not as simple as that, but to make it sound simple, pressing a button and, and Koha will upgrade itself. Um, so we're hoping it's gonna make things much um, more uh, painless for you. Um, and one of the things we're um, probably going to do as well, which we will be communicating with you, is we're probably going to be upgrading you to all of the monthly updates throughout the year. So throughout the year, you're probably doing one upgrade a year, but throughout the year, uh, there's one sort of month, uh, one monthly update that has patches and security updates. Um, and quite often you'll, you know, you'll contact the help desk and you'll say, oh, I've found this problem. We'll, ha we'll have to upgrade you anyway to a point release to fix it. So we're hoping to be able to automate that. So that's exciting. Um, and potentially even be able to automate your upgrades as well so that we can do it perhaps overnight. Um, so that's all stuff we'll be communicating to you about. Um, and uh, from that point of view, it's been a particularly painful year for us to, to actually put all this stuff in place. So um, we apologize, particularly in the beginning of the year when we were sort of getting used to this process. It was a little bit of a bumpy ride for some of you, so we apologize for that. But uh, they've really got it down to a fine art now, a very uh, fine art. So. Um, those of you who still got migrations and upgrades to do, hopefully it'll be smooth, nice and smooth. Um, but um, there's no pain without, uh, there's no gain without pain. So hopefully next year we're going to get the gain from this uh, difficult year. But uh, so that's been interesting. 
Um, they've also improved a lot of the monitoring that we do of the servers. So we do somewhere in the region of 2,000 plus checks on every server that are constantly getting sent to us. So there's a lot of reporting going on. Uh, we can do better visual reporting if you need to know, you know anything about how your server's performing. We can better graph that. One other important thing that we've done this year is we've, uh, we've always had Cyber Essentials. So a lot of you will be familiar with Cyber Essentials. It's the National Cyber Security Agency's uh, scheme uh, for organizations uh, for cyber security. It's all about really desktop security, ransomware. Um, but that's a sort of self-certifying scheme. But the Cyber Essentials Plus is when you get it tested by an external auditor. And we've actually upgraded our Cyber Essentials to Cyber Essentials Plus this year. So again, um, we're delighted about that because these accreditations are always harder for small organizations than big organizations. So we're delighted to get that. Um, so a lot of work has been going on behind the scenes that you probably don't really see you know, day to day, but there's a lot been going on. Um, in terms of sort of uh, just sort of talk about the sort of stuff that's out there. Hopefully you're familiar with our What's and Our Mind videos, uh, which we post fortnightly on our YouTube. If you don't, uh, go and have a look at them. They're useful sort of five, ten minutes uh, sort of snippets. Um, and we hope you find them useful. Uh, I had a quick look. We've had about just under 20,000 views of our content this year, those What's on Our Mind content. So that's quite a considerable amount of people globally looking at that stuff. Um, some of you will have joined us for our open discussions. So again, we hope you find those useful. If, uh, if you've got ideas for topics uh, or any comments generally about them, please talk to us because we're always looking to uh, review those. Uh, hopefully some of you are using our customer Slack channel as well. Uh, I think Fiona's going to talk a little bit about that later. And just to give you a sort of indication, I had a quick look again yesterday before I came up here. We, we've sort of answered somewhere in the region of 2,500 support tickets in the last year, which is quite a, a considerable number, I guess. So uh, again, that's a sort of topic on our agenda this afternoon. We'll be talking a bit more about uh, customer support. Um, those of you on LinkedIn, do follow our LinkedIn page, because again, we post all this content uh, consistently there. So it's a good place to follow. Uh, and then just finally, one thing um, just wanted to mention, we're in the process of reviewing our sort of CRM system at the minute, which is a little bit uh, disconnected in the systems that we use. So this is a project that we're probably going to implement, well, we will, are going to implement next year. Um, and that will affect the, the help desk, the online, um, your, your online portal and the help desk and the way we communicate with you. That's all part of that change. Um, so that is going to happen next year. And again, in the session this afternoon, if you've sort of got any thoughts or comments about um, you know, the existing sort of support portal or the way you communicate with us or any other methods of communication that you like, please do uh, feel free to feed those back in because it's, it's very much in our, in our mind just at the moment. I think that's about it, actually. That's, uh, and there's us. This was back in, actually, it was quite an old photo now. We need an updated one, but that was uh, back in March, I think, uh, up in Coventry. So, yeah, uh, we're, get, we're getting bigger. So that's, that's what's uh, happened in the last year. So hopefully you found that uh, interesting.